Okay, so some typical tactics that we recommend at Martin Engineering to protect workers. We talked about policies, procedures, and protocol. I'm going to talk more about that. Uh, just real quick here, policies, procedures, and protocol. Anytime you work on a belt conveyor, it needs to be locked out. It needs to be tagged out. And you need to test it out. So locking it out ensures that all the electrical energy is eliminated from the piece of equipment. Tagging it out simply means that you add your tag to that lock so anyone can verify who the worker is that's tagged it out. And then finally, testing it out is to verify or ensure that there is no energy. So you try to start up the conveyor. What's often overlooked is what's called a blockout procedure. When you lock, when you lock out a belt conveyor, you're eliminating the electrical energy. But sometimes belt conveyors can have stretch to them. And locking out or eliminating that electrical energy does not eliminate that stretch and that potential energy that you have that comes along with the stretch in that belt. When a worker doesn't account for that stretch and then that stretch is released unexpectedly, it can cause harm. Real briefly here, let's talk a little bit about a blockout procedure. So even though a conveyor is locked out and tagged out, the risk of injury exists due to the chance of uncontrolled belt movement. So there's an MSHA standard, there's an OSHA standard as well that says that uh, any repairs or maintenance of machinery or equipment shall be performed only after the power is off and the machinery or equipment is blocked out against hazardous motion. This standard doesn't exclude belt conveyors. So here you see two workers who are doing some work on this belt and you can see on the outsides of where they're working, you see these two clamps, which they're using to block out where they're working. So they're clamping down on the belt, they're rigging those clamps to some structure, and they're ensuring that that belt can't move in either direction because of any potential stretch. So let me kind of show you real quick here what I'm talking about. This will help you make some, some sense of it. Here's a belt. Okay, and let's say it's getting loaded right here. Let's say this belt's getting loaded with material. Do you think it's possible that that pile of material could get as big as what I have drawn on the screen? Could that happen? Sure, sure. What about this? Could this pile of material get this big? from spillage underneath a conveyor belt. Sure could. Now at some point in time, it's very possible that this pile of material will bury this tail pulley in material. So if this tail pulley is buried in material and then two workers, let's say we got a couple of guys going out here with their shovels. I don't know why I put smiley faces on them. If they're digging out a tail pulley, they're probably not happy about it so we'll use that they go out there with their shovels and they said hey dig this tail pulley out so before they dig it out they lock it out right they tag it out they test it out but they did not block out so this conveyor was tripped out while it was running there's a brake or a backstop on the head pulley. The tail pulley's buried in cargo. That means that there's tension on this side of the belt. Once they start digging out this tail pulley, once they start getting this pile of cargo dug out, at some point in time, that tail pulley is going to be able to move freely and this tension is going to cause this pulley to rotate back. And we got two guys in here digging. Okay, so that's 
block out 